Superlight, Episode 5. Rock Hatfield, best-selling author, producer, and innovator, reads his new groundbreaking novel, Superlight. The author blends myths and ideas from the ancient astronaut theory and the Hebrew Bible to tell a story that will open the mind to new possibilities and distant worlds, all under the creation of the One. This is Superlight. When you have 400,000 horsepower just on the other side of 3 inches of carbon fiber, you need good noise suppression technology. Bill motions Brad to walk in front of him, up toward the cockpit. Brad is very impressed, the seats are plush, the dash is just a large screen that wraps around the entire cockpit. 3D graphics are displayed in different locations to give the pilot complete situational awareness. Brad notices that there are no wheels or controls. The craft is completely AI automated. Bill sits in his seat and pulls on a small headset and pulls a tiny wrap-around microphone. He says, initiate takeoff sequence. The craft's engines rev higher. You can see a graphic of the plane on the dashboard screen. A nice female voice responds, takeoff sequence underway. Arrow, climb to 1,800 feet and transition to horizontal flight. Climb to 6, 5,000 feet. Destination Pine Bluff, Arkansas, Space Force Station. Confirmed Mr. Archer. The computer voice replies, That's it. So easy, a pilot can do it, Bill says, chuckling at his own joke. So Bill, how do you know Barbara? I have known Barbs since she was a young girl. Her father and I were both aero engineers and test pilots in the Air Force. Randall Carpenter, what a great pilot. A few years back he was flying a new design, and the thing just flew into a million pieces. It happened in an instant, nothing he could do. So I have stayed close to the kid kind of watching over helping when I can. The computer says, Mr. Archer, would you like to initiate the landing sequence for Pine Bluff Station? Yes, confirmed, Bill says. Brad can feel the plane slow down and see the big engines out a window transition into a vertical position. The craft slowly drops to the ground. Bill says, initiate shutdown sequence. The computer says, shutting down, have a great day. Brad and Bill exit the aircraft and can see a small group of officers standing nearby. They walk over. Bill, Mr. Hilliard, you made it. Thanks so much for coming. A convoy of black SUVs motors up close to where they are standing. Barbara says, let's ride over to operations. You guys hungry? Sure, they both say as they get into the waiting vehicle. As they move over the tarmac, Brad cannot help but look at the arrow and some of the other exotic aircraft sitting on the tarmac. Barbara turns from the front passenger seat and speaks to Brad and Bill in the back seat. Brad, your superlight and advanced photonics made the morning news. Have you seen the coverage? No, Brad says. What are they saying? That it's a threat to national security and potentially global stability, and they felt it necessary to take oversight of it. Did they get the prototype? Barbara asks. No, Brad responds. Good, maybe I can help you, Barbara says with a smile. Brad, I know you have a secret security clearance and so do you, Bill. So here we go. The SUVs enter a tunnel that goes down a very steep incline. Brad can see other vehicles coming up in another lane on the other side of the road. A few minutes later and the road flattens out, and they emerge into a giant parking lot, with large warehouse-style delivery doors all along the walls of the garage. Semi-trucks are backed at making deliveries. This is amazing, Brad sighs. A bank of elevators are at the end of the garage. The SUVs pull up alongside and everybody piles out. Barbara, Bill, Brad, and the driver pile into the elevator. Barbara punches in a code and the elevator drops, quick. Oh, shit, Brad says. I know, it took me a few rides to get used to this thing, Barbara says. The elevator slows and stops. The doors fling open and they are in a large cafeteria. All right, boys, I'm buying, so get whatever you want. They all grab some trays and walk down the line. Great-looking food, Brad says. Steaks, fish, ribs, seafood, whatever you want. They grab their food and move to a table. You guys eat, I'll talk. Brad, your little project has caused a whole lot of problems, and the exponential gravity of the trouble is mounting at a really fast pace. The superlight has cast a bright light on some areas of the material universe that wants to remain in the dark. The only question now is, do we stand and fight, or do we just give up and surrender all humanity? If we are to survive, we will need to relearn everything about everything. What you know, 
or think you know, is completely wrong, upside down, inside out, and backwards. Brad has stopped eating. What is wrong, Brad? You don't like the food? Barbara asks. The food is fine. I just feel a little queasy right now. That Ethereum inside you is probably spinning around right now. You have a lot to learn in a short time. So, let's get started. They all stand and move toward the door. Brad, the only place that is safe for your discovery is here with me in this facility. Forget about ever monetizing it or demonstrating it, you can't do it. Barbara says, Barbara, I have 50 billion. I have 50 billion of my investors' money in the superlight. I know, Brad. Just wait until the end of the day and then tell me, Barbara states. What do you know about the Ethereans or drivers as they call them? Brad asks. Barbara explains. The Air Force Intelligence Office studied this after Roswell. They had a gray and were able to communicate with it. The gray was eventually returned to a crew of grays that are stationed on a massive vessel parked in the rings of Saturn. We have the Air Force. Now the Space Force stayed in contact with them. The Roswell Gray told us a great deal about the Ethereans, the Old Dominion, and the New Empire. They climb aboard an elevator that is moving up toward the surface. The elevator stops, the doors open, and they enter into a large hangar. The hangar is 100 yards long, 130 feet high, and a large door is letting the morning sun in at the far end of the hangar. Sitting in the back corner of the hangar are two massive, triangle-shaped craft, pitch black, no wings, rudder, fins, just a smooth thick black triangle. What are those, Brad Prize? TR-3 Black Mantic Anti-Gravitic Space Plane. Bill jumps into the conversation, makes the arrow look like an old bi-wing, doesn't it? Bill, nothing wrong with the arrow. It is an amazing plane, Barbara compliments. Let's wait here, Barbara says. They are standing in the middle of the big hangar. All of a sudden, Bill, Brad and Barbara can feel strong static electricity, raising the hair on their heads and arms. A large silver disc appears at the hangar door, floating a few feet above the ground. It slowly enters the hangar and stops a few feet away. Three small doors on the underside fling open and long landing gear extends to the floor. The disc settles down and everyone's hair falls back into place. A stair lowers, and two four-foot gray beings walk down and over to the group. Classic grays, long skinny arms, big heads, almond-shaped large eyes. The grays are wearing silver-blue jumpsuits with no visible buttons or zippers. The suits look like they were formed around them. Brad can hear it speak, childlike. It offers a greeting to Barbara. She shakes its hand and says, let me introduce you to Brad Hilliard and Bill Archer. The Gray says telepathically, I am honored to meet you both. The sensation is strange when it speaks, Brad thinks to himself. The being says, that is because I am speaking to your auditory nerve. I have a small digital field generator that transmits the same signal your brain uses. It appears I am speaking from my mouth, but we are actually mute. We can hear you very clearly, however. Travelers, I wish we were meeting under better circumstances. My commanders have asked you to come on board with us for a face-to-face -face meeting. Please follow us on board. Don't freak, Barbara says, you are going to be very surprised when you walk through the door. Both greys walk up the stairs and disappear inside. Barbara says, go ahead. I am right behind you. Brad climbs the three steps into the disc. As soon as he steps inside he stops, frozen in amazement. The inside of the ship is massive. It appears to be as big as a football stadium inside. How could this little silver disc, no more than 50 feet wide, be this big inside? The little gray says, Brad, I know you want to know what's going on. I could tell you, but then I would have to eat you. Then it laughs. A joke, Brad. Brad lets out an awkward laugh. The two grays walk quickly along a high wall. Brad and Bill are both looking around in utter amazement. They can see dozens of little silver discs stored in their little garages, from the floor to the ceiling. The place is very spartan, no clutter just smooth glistening surfaces everywhere. The greys turn a corner and enter a circular bowl-shaped room. They can see a number of very tall greys, sitting at consoles and walking around. Brad is recoiled by these greys. These guys look hardcore. One walks over to meet the group. The little guys bow a small bow and walk back toward the door. This grey speaks with vocal cords. Barbara, Brad, Bill. Welcome aboard the Stancha Trans Galactica of the New Empire. This is a momentous occasion for both our kinds. This is the first state-sanctioned meeting between Ethereans and travelers. The tall gray walks over to a console and waves his hand, and a 3D hologram appears in mid-air like in an old Star Wars movie. But this hologram is photorealistic. It's the Milky Way galaxy. The big gray speaks, I'm Excelsior Andriel of the Guardian. My responsibility is to protect the interests of the new empire. 
This outpost oversees a large portion of this and two other galaxies. The Guardian have been influential in this universe for billions of Earth years. There are tens of thousands of Ethereum item member travelers scattered throughout the universe. The travelers on Earth are a recent hybrid that began hosting drivers some 140,000 years ago. For some reason they have been a popular travel for many drivers. We have drivers refusing to take other Ethereum item members while waiting for a spot on Earth. Bill, Barbara, and Brad are standing still, wide-eyed. The briefing continues the Ethereum homeworld located near the Matter Converter, at the center of a galaxy, are inhabited by Ethereans of the Old Dominion. They have governed the Matter worlds for billions of years. They discover the method of changing light energy into matter. As they created more and more worlds and travelers to inhabit them, the obsession to travel and build more and more world led to a divide among Ethereans. A large contingent broke away and became known as the New Empire. Many Ethereans became tired of the endless pursuit of data gathering from the material plane. Data became the new currency and billions of Ethereans became exceedingly rich from the data they were collecting from drivers. Look for the print version of Superlight where you buy books. Superlight is part of the Atlantium Network, a collection of books, videos, and podcasts. You can find all things Atlantium on Amazon, Lulu, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Until next time, power and glory to the one.